working through Griffith's electrodynamics. I'm on chapter two and I'm gonna do an example from the book. It's 2.2 and it looks like this up here. So let's just jump to it and get started. So we want to find the electric field due to this charge rod. It has a length 2L, which you will see why in just a second. And it has a charge density lambda. And we want to find uh, the electric field at a midway point on the z-axis at point P, a distance z away from that. Okay, so remember that we, a couple things, okay. Number one, we have the electric field due to a point charge. So in general, and I'm gonna erase this in just a second, if I have a charge, it's located a charge Q, located at vector RQ, and then I have uh, an observation location located at RO, I can find the vector R like that, okay? And this is a slightly different notation than what the book uses, but I like this better because I don't like to have primes and uh, script R's and things like that. I don't like double hats, right? They already have a hat of a vector. And then if I do that, I can find the electric field. Uh, e is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the magnitude of R squared R hat. So that R right there is going to be the observation location minus the charge location. And you may think, oh, well, that's dumb. Why would you even do that? Just put the charge at the origin. Well, we can't because we have a bunch of charges here. And now the other big point is to say that if I have more than one charge, the electric field is just the sum of the electric fields due to individual charges, however many of those I have. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to approximate this rod as a bunch of really small charges, and then we'll take the limit as the size of that charge goes to zero, and, which is an integral, and add up an infinite number of charge electric fields. Okay. So, but that's the key equation right there. So let's just start and pick. I want to pick a generic charge on our rod. So I'm gonna pick right here, that is my charge. Okay, so that little piece right there. So I need to know the location of the observation location. I need to know the location of the charge and then I need to find the vector R. So let's do that one at a time. I'm gonna say RQ, what's the location of that charge? Well, if that's my origin and that's my charge on the x-axis, then this is just gonna be the vector x, zero, zero. Yes, I have my x-axis up because I, I, wanna, I wanna have better space. It's space management. It's about space management, okay. On the board, the board space. So, but if this is my x-axis, then it, whatever the x value of that, that's this vector location. What about the observation location, RO? Well, that's on the Z axis, so I can write that as zero, zero, Z. And you'll notice this isn't gonna change as I move along that rod. My observation location is always the same, but this changes, but it, I can leave it as this expression to say it's a variable, okay? Now I can find the vector R right here. That's my generic R. It's from my, my point my point charge to my observation location. And we can find that uh, R is going to be RO minus RQ. And that's just going to be uh, negative X zero Z, right? So if I take this minus that, I get that. Okay. Now what do we do? Well, we can go ahead and write an expression for our electric field due to that one little piece. It's just a small electric field. I'm going to call it DE, and it is a vector, and it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And what's the charge right there? It's going to be the charge is DQ. It has some elemental charge. Uh, and then I have R squared, R hat, right? And so you can't skip that. You can't say, oh, well, it's not a vector. It's just a scalar. Don't do that. Okay, it's a vector. Electric field's a vector. When we use the superposition principle, we need to add them up as a vector. Now, oftentimes, people will say, well, I already know that the x components of this electric field are going to cancel, so I'm just going to do the z direction. That's not wrong, but this way is better, right? This is more uh, complete. 
Now, of course, we have some problems here. I'm going to have to find the magnitude of R. I'm going to have to find R hat. I'm going to have to find DQ. And then once I do that, I can integrate. Let's start with DQ. Okay. So if I just look at my little piece right here, it has a length DX, right? Because that's how long it is. And if this has a uh, uniform charge density, lambda, linear charge density, so lambda would be DQ over DX. So DQ is going to be lambda DX. That's important. I'm going to put that up here. DQ is lambda DX. Why is that important? Well, because I'm going to integrate over my x variable, so I need my x integration variable dx. I, I'm not integrating over the variable q, right? So I don't really care about dq, I care about dx. So we're going to do a space integral. Next, I have to deal with r hat and the magnitude of r. Now remember r hat, the unit vector r, we define as r hat is the vector r divided by the magnitude of r. And so I actually can use that and plug that in right here, and I get, let's plug both of those things in. I get DE is one over four pi epsilon naught. DQ is lambda DX. And then R hat is gonna be, I'll write it out, magnitude of R squared R over the magnitude of R. So I can combine these two together, and I get one over four pi epsilon naught lambda dx r over the magnitude of r cubed. Now let's go ahead and find the magnitude of r. The magnitude of r, well there's my vector r, see aren't, aren't you glad that we wrote it down? There's my, mag, my vector r, the, the magnitude of that is going to be the square root of x squared plus 0 squared plus z squared. So if I put that in down here, let's put the whole thing, DE is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda dx over. Now I'm going to take this cube, so I'm going to write this as x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves, right? Because this is equal to x squared plus z squared to the 1 half, and then so if I cube that, I get 3 halves. And then I have the vector negative x, 0, z. So I have a vector expression here, right? And now, well, how do you integrate a vector like that? You don't have to. I can deal with just the x component. I can deal with just the y component. I can deal with just the z component. The y component is going to be 0, right? 0 dx integral is going to be 0. So we don't have to care about that. Let me put this up here at the top. I'm going to see if there's anything I need. No, I think I'm good. So let's just rewrite that. DE 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I have lambda. That's, that's a variable. I mean, that's a constant. And then I have dx over x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And then I have negative x, 0, z. OK. So I have two integrals I have to do. I have to do the x component, I have to do the z component. Let's go ahead and do the x component first. So I can write dex, the x component is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda dx x negative, right? Because I'm going to, I'm using the x component now over x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And I'm going to integrate that, and I'm going to integrate this. I don't want to lose my negative sign. I'll put the negative one right there. From x equals negative l to l. OK, so this looks like a tough integral. But you can, you can evaluate the integral if you want. But I'm not going to. Because here's where I'm going to use that trick, right? Uh, integrals are a bunch of tricks. So the trick is this isn't because I'm squaring x and z doesn't change. Z is just a parameter. I'm squaring x. It doesn't matter that I take it to the cube root, uh, 2, 3 halves root. That's an even function. And this is an x is just an odd function. 
So that means that I'm integrating from negative L to L of an odd function. So whatever's on the negative side of from negative L to zero is going to be equal and opposite from zero to L. So I'm going to get zero. So whatever I get, I'm going to get the same thing, that minus itself, and I'm going to get zero. I, I know you wanted me to do the integral, but I'm going to do the next one. And you could, you could look up that integral on a table. Okay. If you're not sure, just look it up. Okay. And, and this is important. There's a homework problem where you're going from zero to L instead of negative L to L, and then it does not equal zero. Okay. So we have that our X component electric field is going to be zero, which we said, right? But now you see why that's true. Okay. So now let's do uh, the Z component. So I'll write this as EZ. No, it's not a vector. EZ is going to be equal to all of this stuff times the Z value. So 1 is going to be the integral from X equals negative L to L of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda Z dx over X squared plus Z squared to the 3 halves. Okay, now it looks impossible and it's a tough integral, that's for sure. Uh, but in this integral, we're integrating over x, z does not change. So all of this stuff is just a constant. So I can pull all of that stuff out front. Let's write this as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda z, the integral x equals negative l to l dx over x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. Now, the, the, the first thing that you should look at when you see that integral is say, can I do u substitution? Could I call that u? Uh, no, you can't, because if you call that u, then du is going to have a 2x dx in there, and we only have a dx. So this ac actually integral is easier. You can use u substitution, uh, but you can't do that down here. So how do you integrate that? Well, you could do a trig substitution, um, but you know, I, I think that in, at this time, we're really focusing on the physics. So I'm going to do what I've done for a long time. I have a book like this. You don't need it because it's online, right? Uh, but this is the standard mathematical tables book, the CRC manual. Uh, and so if you open this up, and I've already got the, the page bookmarked, then you, you can find all these integrals of different forms like that. And I'm looking at this one that says, um, I, it says, I'm going to write it out. It says the integral of dx over, this is exactly how it says it, the square root of x squared plus or minus a squared cubed equals plus or minus x over a squared times the square root of x squared plus or minus a squared. Sorry, that's a little difficult to read. I was holding the book, right? So is that the same thing? It is the same thing, right? Because we have this to the cube power square rooted. That's the same thing as 3 halves. I don't know why they wrote it like that. Probably because it's easier to write in, in a, in back in the, the dark ages before LaTeX and things like that, even though probably didn't have LaTeX. But here we have dx. We happen to have the same variable dx. And they have a constant a squared. We have the constant z squared. It's, a, it's essentially a constant, right? So we can do this integral fairly easily. So let's put our constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda z. And then a is z, OK? And then we're doing the plus, because we have the plus. So I have plus x. So it's going to be x over z squared. Yep, OK, <laughs> I had to think for a second. Uh, times the square root of x squared plus z squared. Evaluated that from negative L to L. We still have to evaluate the limits. That's a little bright right there. Let's see if we can a little bit better. OK, so now let's do that. EZ is going to be equal to, I'm going to put all the constants out front. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda z over z squared, right? I can pull that one out front. And, and so that's going to cancel. That's fine. And then I get uh, 
L over the square root of L squared plus Z squared minus negative L, so I'm putting in negative X, over the square root of X squared plus Z, I mean, sorry, L squared. And so you notice down here, we're squaring that value, so it doesn't matter that it's negative. So I have minus and minus, so I get plus. So now I get the answer. Easy is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda over z times 2L over the square root of L squared plus Z squared. I think that's it. Okay, we need to check some stuff here. Um, number one, units. Does this have the same units as the electric field due to a point charge? Because electric field has to have the same units no matter what the form is, right? So we have the one over four pi epsilon naught, that's good. And then we need to have charge over distance squared. So charge, here I have lambda times L, that is charge, right? So I have uh, the charge on the top. This is coulombs per meter times meters. Now on the bottom, here I have uh, distance squared square rooted. So this is the units of just distance and that's units of distance too. So this does have the right units. Okay. Now what about in the case where L goes to zero? If L goes to zero, then I have I have a point charge, right? So I get the, should get the electric field due to a point charge. So if I if I let as L goes to zero right here, oh, it's not so trivial to see. I think you'd have to divide uh, one over multiply by one over L, one over L, and then you could get uh, Z over L, huh? I'm not so sure about that one. I, I'd have to do a little bit more work, but I, I think it does work. And then let's finally check as z goes to infinity, uh, then e should go to zero, right? So if z goes to infinity, then this does indeed go to zero, so that's good too. So, so it's a good answer uh, in that part. I, I, need to, I need to double check on that. I'm not seeing that right away. But there you go. That's the electric field due to this charge rod. Um, and we did it. Now. I'm going to do this video, I'm going to do this problem again. I'm going to do this problem numerically. I'm going to do this problem in Python by breaking it into small pieces because I think it's fun. And it's useful to think about too because this problem, what if I had my, my point some other place over here, the integral becomes much more complicated because, uh, well, it's not terrible. You can still set it up. Uh, it just becomes difficult to, to evaluate. But there you go. That's the electric field due to a charged rod, the end. I'll talk to you later.